All right, here I am um, doing a full review of the Green Room 136 Rainmaker 2.1. I mistakenly called this the Rainmaker 2.0 in the first look video, so make sure you understand that the, the 2.0 refers to this guy that's on the wall right here. Um, this is the latest version, the 2.1. Um, for a tour of the, the bags, all the features of this bag, I want you to make sure that you go to that video there. That's my first look video. Um, because this review will not cover all the details of the bag. I'm just going to focus on the aspects of the bag that worked really well or did not work so well. Uh, here's a spoiler. This bag works really well. Um, so let's get started with the first set of criteria, and that is design and usability. All right, let's first start with the internal organization of this bag. I found myself using this organizer panel much more than the organizer panel in the front of the bag, which is kind of funny because in the past I used to always talk about how important it was to have quick access to things like pens and pencils and your phone and such. Uh, I actually found that it's just as quick for me to peel down this area. And the fact is when I get to my office or when I get to the classroom where I'm teaching, I'm typically pulling out my computer and my iPad, and at that same point, I'd probably be grabbing out my Apple Pencil, my pen, whatever it is that I'm going to need to teach that day. Um, so I think having the organizer panel within the tech compartment makes a lot more sense for me. The fact is that Green Room 136 provides a, an organizer panel in both areas, so whichever one you prefer, although I will tell you that if you're going to go for the using the front panel as your organizer panel, make sure that you get the peel down front. And just in case you don't understand what I'm talking about, let me get the other one off the wall here so I can show you what I mean by the peel down front. All right, so here I have the Green Room 136 2.0 version of this. This is actually in the larger size too. You can see that it's taking up more space here. Um, and don't forget what's different about this is this has the, uh, the, the zipper covers on it. But notice here that this is designed so that you can peel down the front, as I was alluding to earlier. And then that allows you to be able to get access to this organizer panel here. Um, so if you are somebody who likes to have an organizer panel on the front of the bag, certainly this is the best option. So again, this pack is great in terms of its uh, internal organization because the other thing that it has to offer is two places for you to put file folders. So you'll see here, I actually have file folders placed right here, but if I wanted to, I could go right back to this tech compartment and you can see here, I have another space for file folders that I could take advantage of. So two pockets for file folders and two different areas for your organizer panel. There are so many pockets in this bag, it's pretty remarkable. So um, keep in mind that I have this compartment has two open pockets plus another pocket for your uh, a pen or a pencil. And then inside the main compartment here, I have two of these mesh pockets. So you can easily see this one on the top, but there's also one deeper down underneath here. There is molly on the back in case you want to hang a pocket back there. There are more pockets back here. So you have the two pockets here. You easily could fit an iPhone. You can see here I have a pen and my stylus here or my Apple Pencil. Um, and then obviously you have your pocket for your 15 inch laptop, which it fits no problem. And that's not to mention the awesome pockets for the water bottles. Um, and what makes it even better is that these compression straps that you see here. So if I put my water bottle into this slot, the compression straps actually will hold the water bottle in place so it won't bounce out if you're sprinting across campus. In terms of accessibility, this pack is a huge step up from the 2.1 version and altogether a, a really an awesome pack in terms of accessibility. Um, it, because there are no rain covers for the zippers, these zippers are a piece of cake. And notice that I can open and close these things with just one hand. The zippers themselves are super smooth. Um, and this main compartment opens up incredibly wide. And in fact, the tech compartment, if you're willing to unsnap, you can see that the tech compartment opens up entirely clamshell-like. Um, you do have to unsnap the compression straps, 
which from my perspective doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't really feel like I need to do that because all I'm doing is pulling the laptop out of this pocket here. And I can do that just by opening up the top edge of this zippered compartment. In terms of quick access pockets, you can get this uh, with a spot for your sunglasses and it's lined with corduroy. The nice thing about this quick access pocket is that it actually has its own volume. It sticks out to the front of the pack um, so it's never going to have an issue with taking up space in the interior of your pack. I think this is a good design here. As long as you're careful and you don't place anything on top of your pack when it's laying down like this. As you know, one of the things that I love about packs is when they're able to stand on their own. And as you can all see, this guy has no trouble standing up on its own. And even when it's uh, not completely full, where is that compression strap for goodness sakes? There we go. It can be empty or it can be full. The thing stands on its own without too much of a problem. It has a really nice flat bottom. It's a pretty wide base. So huge benefit there. And then grab handles. We have a grab handle right here at the top. And this does have, what do they call this thing? It's, I think it's called a grab pad. Um, again, this is not something that comes with the off the shelf piece. You'd have to order this, but it's worth it. I mean, it's incredibly cheap. I think it's three US dollars to get the, the grab pad. So you'd want to go for that. And you can also ask them to put a, uh, a grab handle on the sides and even on the bottom if you so choose. So um, the problem is I think it would be hard to use the grab handle when you have the water bottle pockets. And if I need to, I can simply grab one of these compression straps to pull the bag out. I think I probably should have had this thing customized to have a grab handle on the bottom because there are some times you can imagine where you put this into the overhead compartment in an airplane and you put it in the wrong side. Well, there is no wrong side if you have a grab handle on both sides. You can just grab it and pull it from that area. And then there are some other make life easier features that this pack has to offer. So it does have load lifters here. Although I'm gonna talk about load lifters in a little bit, that they don't work super well for a pack like this. Um, the fact that the pack itself doesn't collapse under its own weight because it's made out of pretty stout material, it stays nice and stiff, keeps its shape. Um, like I said, the water bottle pockets are incredibly usable and um, the compression straps are actually really handy too. If you really wanna flatten the load, if you're not carrying a lot in that main compartment, you can make this pack get really slim and press it right up against your back. Um, there is a hidden pocket, which I think is awesome. So I actually keep my wallet in my hidden pocket here. Whoa, receipts flying out all over the place. Um, you could keep your passport in there, etc. It's a great thing to have and it's um, right up against your back. So there's no chance that somebody's gonna be able to get in there without you knowing that they got in there. And then this other piece, which I've mentioned before in the first look, I think is awesome. This little tab right here, which is not a handle, obviously, because it's too small, but it's a great thing to be able to hang your bag on a hook, on a coat hook. Um, and I think it's just a, a nice little touch that they put there. Um, and it just means, you know, Patrick, the guy who designs these bags, really is so thoughtful about details just like that. So let's talk about some of the things that don't perhaps work as well as I would like it to. Um, the first and foremost thing is that you'll notice the pack actually has a very dark gray interior. Um, it's fine if you're in a very well lit area, but in most places they're not so well lit. You don't usually have a spotlight going into your bag there. It would have been super nice if they had made this into a, like a, a bright yellow or even maybe even a white in the interior or even a lighter gray. So it would be easier to see the contents of your bag because it is easy to lose little things in the bottom of your bag. So keep that in your brain. I would love for there to be an option to have tarpaulin on the front here. Um, make it a little bit more waterproof. Whenever I'm cruising across campus in the rain, I'm generally, I have a, um, an umbrella with me, but oftentimes just the way that you hold an umbrella, the back of your pack gets wet. Um, it's just unavoidable depending on how the, the rain is falling. So to be able to have a completely waterproof tarpaulin option would have been super sweet, but um, hey, you can't get everything. And then lastly, I would say the one thing that, while I love these zippers, and I'll talk about those zippers in a little bit, the zipper poles themselves are huge because they're big zippers, and they tend to jingle together. You can hear them sort of ringing together like that. Um, I don't love that sound. It sounds like I'm a dog whenever I'm walking around. So if they could have maybe just coated them in nylon to make them a little bit less jingly when I walked, that would have been 
great. Um, I probably can just sort of do it myself, frankly. So maybe I can find one of those nylon dip things, put them in there, and then I'll be set. I said I'd talk a little bit about the load lifters, and I would say that this is not so much um, something against the pack as much as it's sort of a neutral thing. Um, typically for load lifters, you want to have a pack that goes above your shoulder. So when you think about the adventure packs where that you take on multi-day hikes where you're overnighting with a sleeping bag, your tent and everything, those things do extend usually up you know, to your head level, you know, maybe at the top of your head, the bag would be that high. And it allows you when you're using load lifters to actually pull the pack against its frame and truly pull the shoulders up so that the top of, of the shoulder strap is not resting it on your shoulder top, but is then resting against the sort of the front of your shoulder, as you could imagine. And with a bag like this, there's just not enough, as you can see here, there's not enough of a separation between where the load lifter is attached and where the actual uh, top of the shoulder pad is attached to the bag. And it's also flexible here too. So the bottom line is they look cool, but in terms of functionality, load lifters don't really do much on a pack like this, nor do they really need to. You're usually not carrying so much weight that you need to have load lifters. So again, that's just a neutral uh, observation here. It's neither bad nor good. Um, just know that they don't really offer that much in terms of functionality. So in the end, you know, I would have gladly given up one of the, the internal molly. I don't use that. Um, the load lifters, maybe even the second mesh pocket in the main compartment. I would have given those things up for a couple key items. I would love to have had a dedicated iPad pocket just in front of the laptop pocket that's padded. I can certainly put my iPad in here, but it isn't in an area that's going to be padded. So that's kind of a bummer. And it would be great if it was one of those iPad pockets that would accommodate a 12.9 inch ad iPad Pro as opposed to just the, the 10 inches or even the iPad minis. Um, and then the other thing I would love to get here, as I mentioned earlier, is having a really bright yellow interior so I could see everything that I'm accessing in the pack. So in the end, I give this an 8.5 out of 10 in terms of design and accessibility. So let's talk about comfort as the, the second index. Um, and for this, uh, let's, the, the most important thing is to talk about the suspension system here. Notice here that these are really wide shoulder straps that are not overly padded. Sometimes when they're overly padded, it can actually feel, you feel mushy and it feels disconnected from your body when you're using the pack. Um, this has the perfect amount of padding. The width means that it's distributing the weight of the load nicely across the, your, your shoulder here. Um, it would be better if they were slightly more shaped. Notice that they do sort of kick out on, towards the outside of the pack in this situation, but I think that they actually need to kick out even further, maybe you know another couple of degrees out wide. What happens here is when you put it on, in fact, let me just put it on for you right here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so when you're wearing the pack, Notice that if these things, if the straps could actually be a little bit more parallel for a little bit longer and then sweep out and go under, it would be more comfortable because right now what's happening is I can feel the pressure on my rib cage right here underneath my chest. And the only way to make it a little bit more comfortable is to actually use the sternum strap, which pulls it together more at the top. Um, but I don't always want to use a sternum strap. And so it's kind of a bummer that in some ways to make it the most comfortable, you have to use the sternum strap to pull it all together. Now this bag is pretty heavy when it's empty. Um, in fact, there have been many times where I picked up the bag and thought, holy cow, what do I have in here? Only to discover that I don't have anything in there of note. Um, so it is a heavy bag. I mean, it, it's built like a tank, which is one of the reasons why it's so heavy. Um, but if that's important to you, obviously that's, uh, that's gonna be something that is a negative about this bag. In terms of sweat control, they really did an excellent job of putting mesh in the places that are in contact with any part of your body. So on the back of the shoulder straps, on the back, the entirety of the back itself. Uh, maybe it would be nice if they had removed the center column and put a little bit of relief in here to allow for the chimney effect to let your perspiration get up and out. 
But I really have to say that this is a super comfortable bag and um, I haven't felt it's winter here, so I guess I can't really know, but it hasn't felt like it was gonna get my back all sweaty at any point. So it's, uh, it's true, it's not the most comfortable pack to wear. Um, and if you're hiking more than a mile, it, you're gonna feel it. But for most of us, we're using these as commuter packs. So we're taking them on and off quite a bit. And it probably really wouldn't make that much of a difference. However, um, there are packs that are more comfortable. So for example, this, uh, where is it? Where is it? Right here, this Radial 26. My God, it's by far the most comfortable pack for an everyday carry. Uh, it, it's remarkable. The suspension system for that and, you know, go to where, up, uh, over there, go to that card for my review of the Radial 26 and you'll um, understand why it's so comfortable. In terms of the comfort score, I would give this a 7.5 out of 10. All right, so let's talk about the build quality. Um, this dude, this pack is going to last you for absolutely ever. It's made out of a thousand Denier Cordura all over the place. It's so damn tough. Um, as you well know, I'm sure if you're into packs, Cordura is incredibly abrasion resistant and 1000 Denier Cordura is the most, I mean, actually it probably isn't the most dense weave, but it's pretty, pretty much, um, unbeatable. Most packs, um, that are, uh, designed for going into battle have 1000 denier cordura um, it's also fully lined which is something that's really rare uh, usually packs don't take the time the manufacturers don't time take the time to fully line them and yet you'll see in this pack it's lined everywhere and so you know clearly they took the time to do that because they realize how much more luxurious it is to use as a pack when you have a pack lined like this these feel like they're number 10 YKK zippers. I'm pretty sure that's what I remember saying in the um, the previous video, the first look video. And even these plastic quick release buckles are made by YKK. So he spared no expense in terms of the quality of the hardware. And even in areas where it's not really a high stress piece like this, the, the zipper for this pocket, even this is a number 10 YKK zipper. And every single one of these zippers is one of these stormproof, weatherproof zippers. So pretty awesome that uh, this thing is built with such stout hardware. In terms of manufacturing, you will not find a stitch out of place on this bag. Um, the seams are beautiful. It's handmade with incredible precision and attention to detail. Clearly no robot ever touched this pack. It's, it's made with love. A human being actually put this backpack together. Um, in terms of waterproofness, it's a coated Cordura, so it's certainly going to be, um, to some degree, weatherproof. But keep in mind, seams are never really, they're, they're not going to be taped in this situation. And after a while, even coated nylon is going to break down over time. So don't expect this thing to be waterproof, but it's water resistant enough and it'll shed rain for a few years before it starts to get a little bit leaky. Um, but that's why you should carry an umbrella if you happen to live in a place where there's a lot of downpours. One of the oddities I will tell you is that for this pocket here where I keep my glasses, it's lined with the, um, the corduroy on one side and on the bottom. But strangely enough, the front edge is just lined with the regular old nylon, the, the dark gray nylon. So I sort of would have expected that they'd make the whole thing wrapped in that uh, in the corduroy in order to protect your glasses. But I guess that's just a uh, design choice by them. So in the end, uh, this thing is definitely heavy, but it's also going to be around long after your grandchildren have inherited this bag. Um, so you got to give this thing a 10 out of 10 in terms of the, uh, the build quality. Okay, and lastly, in terms of the crossover index, and again, this is that weird thing where um, I want my packs to work just as well in um, uh, during the work week, during you know business time, as it would if I were hiking in the woods on the weekends. Um, that's sort of the crossover index, which I rate on a, a scale of one to three. Um, and I would say that the, the fact is, if you order this in all black, um, and given its shape, it's very straightforward, a boxy shape, which I know is probably not 
not everybody looks at it and likes the look of it, but it also means that you can use this with a suit. I mean, it would look very clean and unencumbered, and it certainly wouldn't attract attention in any sort of way. Um, but you could also, because of its build quality, because of how accessible it is and how well it holds gear, this thing is a gem to use on the weekends when you're hiking on a you know three or four mile hike through the woods with your camera gear, uh, snacks, and an extra couple of layers. So it really does a great job of being a crossover pack. And so for that, I give this a three as its crossover index. So that wraps it up, this uh, pack all together. If I total up all those numbers, I think it gives me a 29. And that's a 29 out of a possible 33. So for me, in terms of decision, whether I lose it or use it, this is there's no doubt about it. This is a pack that I say is a use it. Go ahead and order this from Green Room 136 if it seems to fit what you're looking for. And don't forget that this is something that can be customized and uh, it's pretty fun actually to go about customizing it. So it's worth going to the Green Room 136 website and take a look at all the different options you have for customizing your Rainmaker 2.1. All right, so don't forget, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe or um, take a look at the other reviews. And the one last thing before I go, I need to do a quick shout out to Will Stanier. He's one of my students who is a recent subscriber to this channel. And Will, thanks for subscribing. We are close to making another threshold of 2,000 subscribers. So maybe talk to some of your friends convince them to subscribe, and we can get over the hump. All right, see you guys in the next pack review.